Oh, good evening guys. Uh, welcome to a very warm and uh, humid Durban. Um, I hope you guys are having a awesome weekend, awesome afternoon, awesome evening. Um, yeah, I just there's just something on my heart um, that I'd like to share with you tonight. Um, and see, at the end of, I'll just quickly recap on like the last two messages that I just, that I, that I spoke about. Um, at the end of last year, I, I asked the Lord for a word um, to take into 2023. The word that I that I felt the Lord give me was uh, the word hope. Um, to hope in the Lord for more um, and, and, and trust Him more in 2023. Um, then the Lord led me to speak about um, a new beginning. At the beginning of this year, um, a new year which brought along a uh, fresh start with and in Christ, which brings uh, so which bring me to tonight. Um, I really feel uh, the Lord wants to re rebuild and restore things that have been lost, that have been stolen, or even broken down in mine and my family's life, but also in your life. It's an exciting time. I, I'm really excited about 2023. Uh, I'm really excited on what the Lord has already started doing um, in and through us um, at the beginning of this, uh, with, uh, in the first couple of weeks of of of, of the new year. Um, it's a new year with fresh hope and a fresh beginning, in the, with with and in the Lord Jesus Christ. So the title of my message tonight is. Rebuilding and restoring what is lost. So let's have a look at uh, Psalm 127 verse 1. It says this. Unless the Lord builds the house, those who build it labor in vain. Unless the Lord watches over the city, the watchmen stay awake in vain. See, Solomon understood that the work of man had its place, but it was of, of, of very little use without the work um, and, and, and blessing of God. Um, Solomon, Solomon understood that though God welcomed and even um, commanded human effort uh, or participation, um, his God's work and blessings were more important, were far more important than, than than the actual work of 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 man of humans, uh, and it's the same for us, unless we allow God to build our lives, and allow God to watch over our lives, um, and, 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 and 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 take control of our lives. We can build, and we can build, and we can build. We can keep building. But eventually, it's going to, the house is going to crumble. Because the foundation is not solid. Because we've, we, we were forgetting one very important person in the building of our lives. And that's Jesus Christ. So our labor will go in vain. Because... We're building and relying on our own strength rather than relying and, and, and depending on God's strength. See the difference? We can build on our own strength. Eventually it's, it's, it's going to crumble. But we build with the Lord's strength and the Lord's um, uh, uh, blessings and the Lord's work. And the, the, it'll stand firm. You see, we have to make we have to make Jesus our chief cornerstone, and we have to build our lives on and around the cornerstone, which is Jesus. Look, you see, um, a little, just a little bit of um, uh, thing on a on a on a cornerstone. A cornerstone. Um, what then is the rock which the weight of the entire structure rests? Jesus 
is our right and true foundation. He's perfect, and whatever is built in alignment with Him will be right and true. So whenever we build our lives, we have to build our lives on the Word of God. Because the Word of God is true, the Word of God is right, the Word of God is everlasting, and Jesus is our rock, our cornerstone. He's our rock. Remember when he when he went onto the cross, he took the weight of the entire world on his shoulders, and that's what a what a cornerstone in a building does. It 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 it's, it's the rock that that holds up the, the the weight of the structure. So when Jesus was on the cross, he took the weight of the world on our, on his shoulders. Hence being our chief cornerstone. And anything that is built on Jesus, built on the word of God, will be right and true. 1 Peter 2 verse says, two, uh, sorry, one, let me try that again. 1 Peter 2 verse 5 says this. You yourselves, like living stones, are being built up as a spiritual house to be a holy priesthood, to offer spiritual sacrifices acceptable to God through Jesus Christ. You see, we are and or and and becoming living stones when we trust in the in the living stone, the cornerstone, Jesus Christ. And together, in all our individual uniqueness, we are built into a spiritual house. A house of the Spirit where God dwells among us. You see, I'm not talking about a physical house that we built. That, that we built. God wants to restore us spiritually. God wants to, 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 to um, rebuild our lives spiritually. He wants to rebuild those, those, those broken relationships. He wants to rebuild... Um, wants to rebuild and mold us to be able to walk in alignment with God so that we can experience the fullness of what she, what what God has for us in our lives so no matter no matter no matter how broken we are or have been God is looking to restore us because he loves us and he is merciful and he is faithful. So I really feel that this year, we've look, the last two, three years has been absolute chaos. COVID, flooding, um, you name it, it has hit, and 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 it's been. But but I, I, I really believe that as we move into twenty twenty three, the the hope of God is going to start shining. The new beginning in God is going to come through. The 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 the, the, um, the rebuilding and the restoring is now going to start sh to take shape within us through 2023. But we have to allow God to do that. God's not just going to just do it. We have to allow God into our lives. We have to allow God to take control. We have to, we have to in return pick up our cross, and we have to follow Jesus. We can't be, we can't be living in the world and then expect God to restore and to rebuild what is what the world has 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 stolen from us, because we're still living in the world. We've got to turn our back on the world. We've got to be set apart. We are set apart to walk in the fullness and walk with Christ. But we have to allow him to rebuild. We have to we have to give him everything, and allow him to to work in us and manifest his love and his strength and his power in us and through us as we walk into twenty twenty three. Isn't that amazing? Isn't that, isn't that exciting? Excites me. I'm excited because I know that whatever has been lost, whatever has been broken, whatever has been um. Whatever I, whatever has been lost, God is going to rebuild and restore 
things in my life. But I have to allow him to do it. 1 Peter 5 verse 10 says this. And after you have suffered a little while, the God of all grace, who has called you to his eternal glory in Christ, will himself, here we go, will himself restore, confirm, strengthen, and establish. I'm going to read that one more time. 1 Peter 5 verse 10 says, And after you have suffered a little while, the God of all grace, who has called you to his eternal glory in Christ, will himself restore, confirm, strengthen, and establish you. Isn't that, isn't, that, isn't that good news? That's good news to me. But I want, I want God to restore me. I want God to establish me. Although suffering is not something to relish, God has promised to strengthen and support us. To restore and establish something new in and through us as we draw closer to Christ. In a re, re, renewing of our hearts, renewing of our minds. And to bring us into his eternal glory. In Christ. I'm, I'm, uh, I don't know about you, but I, I really want that. I really want God to, to, to strengthen me. I really want God to support me. I want him to restore and establish me. In the kingdom of God. <clears throat> because that's our ultimate goal. Is to be established. In Christ. In heavenly places. And we're going to give living sacrifices to the Lord. By, by, what I mean by that is by, by, by picking up our cross. And enduring the hardships. And looking to Christ. And be faithful to Christ. And be and, be, and honor God. In all areas of our lives. Not just some. But all areas of our lives. And I'm not saying that. But hear me. I'm not, I'm not saying that the hardship or trials. Will just magically disappear. Not what I'm saying at all. And that it's just going to be smooth sailing from here. That's not what I'm saying. But what I am saying. Is God wants to establish something in our lives. He wants to establish himself in our lives. He wants us to restore, re restore the relationship we have with him by getting closer and drawing nearer to him. And how do we do that? We, get, we draw nearer to him because of the word of God. This is our tool right here. Whatever we want to know is here in the, in the word of God. Whatever help we need is in the Word of God. We just need to read it. We need to understand it. We need to live it. We need to apply it. We need to meditate on it. That's how we offer. We need to. We need to. We need to. Obviously, then, then love our neighbor and, and and all the things that He has commanded us. But that's how we start getting into relationship with Jesus. That is how we start offering spiritual sacrifices, which is acceptable to Jesus. And he wants to he wants to rebuild our lives in and through him, that we may be like the wise man who built his house on the rock. Remember him. And the winds and waves came, and the storms came, and the rain came down, but his house stood firm. And why did it happen? Because the foundation was was solid it wasn't built on the sand like the foolish man and then the winds came and poof, house went flat so we got to build god wants us to build our lives on the rock who is jesus and so that no matter what comes our way and no matter no matter no matter no matter the trials or tribulations that come our way we can stand firm 
on the word of God. Because we've built our lives and we've built our house on solid rock, on a solid foundation. Jesus is our cornerstone and Jesus is our rock. So he's looking to rebuild our lives on the rock, which is Jesus Christ. So, we, so, so let us allow Jesus, let us allow, allow our Father, our loving, merciful, faithful Father, who loves us, to rebuild and restore our lives and let us stand firm in Jesus Christ. Let us stand firm in Him because we need Jesus. I need Jesus every day. I'm not ashamed to say that. Because Jesus, without Jesus, I think my life would look a whole lot different. Yes, mistakes made mistakes, whatever the case is, which is leading me up to, it's been, it's been hard the last couple of years. But I really, really am excited for 2023 that he's going to restore and rebuild what is lost. But we have to allow him to. We have to, we have to renew our hearts, renew our minds. We have to love the, love the Lord your God with all our heart, all our mind, all our strength. And then we have to seek first the kingdom and his righteousness. And then guess what? Once we, when we seek the Lord first, our loving Father will give us what we need. He'll add everything that we need. But, he's got to, but we've got to establish him first in our lives. We've got to make him number one. He doesn't. God doesn't like second place. God is first. And with God being first, he's going to restore something in our lives. He's going to rebuild something in our lives. If we just let him. So guys, have a great evening. If you have missed this, this feed, um, I will be putting it on my YouTube channel. Uh, so you can go and catch it there. Uh, you can also subscribe to my channel for more encouragement and more on the Word of God. Um, it's been an honor. It's been a privilege. Um, I really do feel honored and privileged um, to be able to share the Word, to be able to share the messages um, as, I, as, 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 I, as, I, as I received them from the Lord. Um, so it's a very humbling experience. Um, yeah, so have a great evening and uh, we'll have a great week. Um, and until next time, cheers, bye.